Hi, and welcome to question 7 of the 2017 Paper 1, uh, or New Level Leaving Cert. Um, this question here now is a 5A in the grade, that means it's a hit or miss, so it's either right or wrong. You're given the first three patterns in a sequence of patterns of tiles are shown in the diagram below. So these pattern questions, just better taking some time figuring out what's going on, okay? So on this first box there's five, okay, tiles. The next one there is eight tiles. And the next one there is, what's that, four, four is eight, eleven tiles. If you can see it, okay, there's a jump of three each time. So that's the, the common difference. So in this is an arithmetic sequence. It goes up in a regular amount, okay? Whereas a geometric sequence will go up in a ratio. Be increasing, increasing, increasing. So this question part A here says, draw the next pattern of tiles onto the diagram. So you want to keep that, that basic shape. We're going to have 11 and 3 is 14 tiles. Okay. Now draw it there. Okay. So you have your 5, 5 is 10, and the extra 4 here. So 14 tiles. That's it. Okay. Full marks. Now if you're left off anything, it's the problem with hit and miss questions. Is anything wrong? Just marks lost. So part B here, okay, this is a 5C, so it's a low partial and uh, high partial. And you have your table here of the, uh, the pattern that's going on. So in table or pattern number one, there's five tiles. Now you should see, be able to see from pattern number two that there was, what, eight? Um, I have the answer here. Eight, then 11, then 14, and the next one will be 17. So the difference again each time is three. Part C here, uh, part one of part C says, as uh, a 10C question, so again, there's a low partial, high partial. Assuming the pattern continues, the number of tiles in the end diagram uh, of the sequence is given by the formula Tn equals P times N plus Q, where P and Q are natural numbers. P and Q will be positive whole numbers. Find the value of P and Q. Now, before doing the question, if I'm ever looking to find two unknowns, it's usually going to involve simultaneous equations. If you have an equation of two unknowns, it can't be solved. If you can compare two equations of the same two unknowns, well, then they can be uh, cancelled using the, the elimination method or the substitution method. So let's see here, okay, so I've written out the um, statement from the question. So the total number of uh, tiles is given by <clears throat> P times the number of tiles. Uh, the, uh, plus the Q, okay. So currently there's four unknowns. Okay, so we'll just read through what we went through. We are looking to solve the equation above. If there are four unknowns, we need to figure out more info. So if we take any of the piece of information from the previous question here, okay, even for example, T of 1 equals 5, well, that means the N is 1 and the total number of tiles is 5. So I have two pieces of information right there. Um, I show, I'm doing that basic thing here. Um, in the t of 1 equals 5, I'm taking the next one, t2 equals 8, and that allows me to generate two equations. So for the first one, total number of tiles 5 equals p times the first uh, pattern plus q. So you see then I've, I'm going to end up in an equation of two unknowns. I've just got that represented here. I've taken a different piece of information from the table, and I've taken the second one because, it's just because the numbers are smaller. It doesn't matter which one I take. Um, so the number of tiles in the second pattern is 8, and that's the second pattern. So simplify that, you end up with a second equation of the same two unknowns. So I can use the simultaneous equation method. Okay, and I put them together here. Now I'm not going to go through it um, in detail because it takes space, whatever. Um, but it can be very easily solved. And if you find out when you eliminate them that um, basically p equals 3, and then put p back into either equation, and you calculate Q. Okay, so C part one. Now C part two here says, how many tiles are there in the 20th pattern? Well, if we now know that T, you know, the total number of tiles equals, what was it, 3N uh, plus two. We can work out how many tiles in any uh, pattern. So, okay, so the answer there, you have your formula there. We put in 20 in instead of N. Okay, so use the function notation. Uh, put it through in the calculator, I get an answer of 62. Now then, part 3 here, okay, is also, uh, part A, 2 is 5B, so uh, mid-partial, high-partial, or full marks. Part 3 here is also 5B. 
And this time I'm being told that total number of tiles, I'm being asked to find out which pattern number that is. I could go up and, you know, the calculator, but and in a sort of trial and error method, find out the answer. But by far the most efficient method is to use algebra. So use your model here, your, your, your linear equation. I'm now being told what Tn is. So Tn is 290 equals three times. Now we don't know what the, 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 the what number of number pattern it is. So that's what our unknown is, what we're trying to find. So you now have an equation of one unknown. Just solve it out, okay? And you end up with 96 is the answer. Job done. Okay, so I'll move on to part D, part one. Now question seven is always a long, a long old question. We see here they're giving us this formula. Okay, so don't question it, it's just that's whatever they give you. I notice here that this n to the power of two is a quadratic. Okay, so just need to be careful. Um, so they show that s, s of n equals 3n squared plus 7n all divided by 2 is a formula for the total number of tiles needed to build the first n patterns. Okay, so I'm going to go to the math tables. Okay, I've taken, I've taken a screen grab here. And it's an arithmetic sequence we're dealing with because the common difference is the same, going up the same amount each time. So this is the formula I'm looking at. Okay. Now I'm going to, I brought that in here so you see the, the sum of, the, of, of all the tiles in an end pattern equals the pattern number divided by 2, all multiplied by 2 times the first value, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Now I know what the first term is, okay, it's 5. I know the common difference is, it's 3, okay, so the only unknowns are the s of n and the n. And if you notice in what we're trying to show there, there, there as well. So if I put my numbers in, <clears throat> I end up with uh, this piece. Then remove brackets. Okay, so the 2 times 5 there becomes the 10. And I'm multiplying the 3 into the brackets. So 3 times n is 3n. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Okay, so I can simplify it down um, again here. I just carried, I've carried this up just to make it clear. And now multiplying the n over 2 into this. Uh, bracket, I end up with this, um, so n times 10 is 10n, n times 3n is 3n squared, n times minus 3 is minus 3n. That's all divided by 2. The 10n and minus 3n will combine together to give 7n, and now I've shown that what I was given in the question is the same, and I probably should have stated that more clearly in the site, it says state something like proven or whatever. I just realized now I haven't put that in. But, Probably wouldn't lose any marks, but sometimes they can be a little bit finickety and say there must be a statement of, of, of success or whatever. So that's D part one. There's a 15C. Okay, so zero, low partial six, uh, high partial 10. Okay, so even just using that, recognizing that formula is what needs to be used and with any input at all into it, you're probably looking at least the low partial there, maybe the, the high partial, which is good, good money for a complicated question. So now D part two says find the total number of tiles needed to build the first 30 patterns. Okay, so we'll just go to the answer here. Now I'm using the same formula again. Okay, this time um, the, the, we're told there's 30 patterns. You're trying to find the total number of tiles in all those patterns. A is still 5, okay, and D is still 3, still the common difference. Okay, so I put all my numbers in. And in this case now it's pretty straightforward in that it's all on the same side of the um, equation. So I can just put it directly in the calculator just as it looks like that. Okay, and you should always substitute values in in brackets. That way when you're programming a calculator, it'll just be a matter of copying from the, the page into the calculator. Put it through and I get an answer of one, four, five, five tiles. Okay. And I would make sure to double check my programming on the calculator, just to make sure I am right. Um, or you could always simplify it down a little bit before you use the calculator. Um, but again, that's 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 your choice depending on how you how you approach this kind of question. So this D part two. Oh, okay. That's question seven finished. So thanks very much. And see you at question eight.